So that's, uh, as you may see in the big screen above you, I'm Alex Pazaitis, I'm from Greece, and uh, I'm here from P2P Lab, which you may know as the research arm of the P2P Foundation. And uh, before getting in deeper into the, the concepts of platform and open cooperativism, I'm just providing um, our little story as uh, maybe a case of an open co-op, and uh, we may discuss it afterwards. So to... To start up, uh, we were, of course, inspired by the, open, the P2P movement uh, from uh, open source software all the way to Wikipedia and uh, open hardware and envisioning an um, open design physical world that we would ideally like to see happening. And um, that led us to, to, the, to the idea of the P2P lab, but uh, if I may take us some years behind, this is how we used to look like some years ago. And uh, you may recognize the logo, by the way, the, from the P2P Foundation logo. And um, it was uh, initiated as an idea by uh, co-founder Vasilis Kostakis, uh, who was back then a really young researcher at the Tallinn University of Technology, who worked on uh, P2P technologies, basically 3D printing and uh, Arduino microcontrollers. And he had the idea that working on such technologies would make much more sense if you had actual people sharing the the technologies and all of them worked on them as a community and so um, an initial community driven hacker space was set up. It was not so much fancy as a, as a place but it was created with lots of love and inspiration but um, through that community that was supporting and co-managing the, the hacker space uh, um, a different group emerged of some people who had more professional aspirations and uh, wanted to make a living out of doing research on uh, P2P technologies. And that led us to P2P Lab as we know it today and as you might know it after today's presentation, which is an interdisciplinary research hub just uh, doing dedicated to the study and documentation of P2P technologies and uh, collaborative practices. Uh, we were not alone. Uh, uh, from the beginning on, P2P Foundation has provided some tremendous inspiration and guidance and support through the global community of uh, activists and scholars, and uh, at the same time retaining the relations with uh, the Ragnar Nooks School of Innovation and Governance in the Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia, which is basically one of the few schools uh, doing research on heterodox economics and presenting alternative approaches and technology governance. And uh, they were kind enough to offer us um, a little space in providing our alternative approach within this framework. And so we ended up to this type of model that kind of balances bef between academia and the civil society trying to maybe support the civil society's potential to uh, research and innovation and uh, transitionary dynamics. And, uh, but uh, we developed from an open community driven hackerspace to a more closed model actually, which uh, had to also serve as a co-working space, but uh, uh, we also developed new facilities and uh, we wanted to retain that open relation with the community, so offering some open days, some days a week, so that people could use our collaborative meeting place or organize events and uh, experiment with 3D printers in our little lab or browse through our library. And, um, but chiefly, it was a co-working, it is still a co-working space for the members of the P2P lab. And uh, in that sense, how is... Uh, our relation with the commons, and this is where we find it's and not what we are, but we actually what we do. And uh, the, uh, we try to offer alternative uh, practical research and through participatory action research, and uh, that way to support and enrich the commons through either our processes or maybe our output, which uh, our research outcomes are basically anything from an actual artifact or a prototype to a process or a model. If I may provide some examples, this is uh, the model, the, um, an early prototype of uh, the Helix T wind turbine for low-scale energy domestic production, and uh, which was being collaboratively designed with an online community. Or it could be um, a learning process, which is a learning by doing process tested in two schools in Ioannina, Greece. These are actual artifacts developed by students experimenting with 3D printers and uh, learning by doing processes. 
and uh, it could also be an artwork. This is in Greek, the man with a spotted tie, a theatrical play which we like to call wiki theater because it's not um, created by one single author but is uh, a collaboration of uh, five different authors who never actually met in person during that work and collaborated through a wiki. Or finally, our current flagship project would like to have as an outcome an integrated uh, production model which we call Design Global Manufacture Local. Um, some other people might have the opportunity to learn more about that in the other hall right here, right now, but it uh, doesn't matter. And um, so to, to finish up, uh, whether P2P Lab is an open corp or it isn't, uh, um, as regards openness, we emphasize our contribution and support of the commons either directly by the, by the outcomes of our research or by supporting and enriching the commons through scientific knowledge or technologies or processes or practices that we um, develop and uh, document. At the same time, we like to work with uh, communities, local communities or global community um, supporting what we do. And uh, on the other hand, we, well, as I said at uh, the very beginning, we wanted to make a living out of this work. So we had to adopt a cooperative organization, which made sense. And uh, P2P Lab is basically a worker-owned cooperative, one could say. There are no hierarchies, uh, um, no official hierarchies at least. And it's, um, uh, there are some meritocracy, of course, uh, based on um, reputation, basically. Uh, but uh, to this process, we faced many challenges. We, we faced many problems with the legal system, which is not compatible. Sometimes we need to maneuver through the system. Other times you need to challenge the system. For example, in order to develop those facilities, which you saw, it's, um, we acquired EU uh, funding, which was directed um, initially for mainstream enterprises, businesses, basically. So we had to adopt a sole proprietorship legal form, which is our current legal form. However, that is, that is on the front end, while at the back end, it doesn't stop us from having genuine cooperative governance and sharing resources and uh, um, work in this way. Uh, we're actually six months away from becoming officially cooperative, which is uh, fulfilling the requirements of the funding. But at the same time, we had to comply with other things like uh, keeping an eight... Uh, eight-hour working day, which was not the case because we were virtually, uh, practically not, never on the place to work. We worked remotely from many places in a synchronous manner. We were pretty much autonomous, not having labor, worker, employer, and employee relations. Uh, and uh, we had some, we had to retain some relations with uh, more traditional institutions like the Tallinn University of Technology, and in some cases even the Greek government with the Syriza plan for the commons. and the, did not work so well, but uh, we did manage to retain that relation. And finally, we also had to challenge the system by some illegal practices, one might say. We cannot compromise and not sharing our research results openly, but they are mostly published in proprietary journals and editions, so well, we do share them anyway, but uh, please don't tell anyone, but uh, you may check them out. And um, to, to finish with that, uh, I might come up with some questions which uh, the panel can later on provide the discussion some answers to probably. Uh, we would like, to, we, we say that we're an open cooperative and uh, so in that sense uh, it's a compromise uh, between openness or the open source movement and the whole sharing of resources and outcomes and uh, in the sphere of the commons but at the same time if uh, this is going to work in, in some time of entrepreneurial spirit you there are some enclosures, some type of enclosures at least, and so in this sense, how much open and how much cooperative should an open cooperative be, and uh, uh, what does each of these two things actually mean? And with that, I will finish, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>